Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. Today we'll be looking at the development of the gods. We'll be looking at the development of the gods and also the digestive system. You know, the reason why we'll be looking at the formation of the gods is because the digestive system develops from the gods or rather you say that the gods gave rise to the digestive system both the main digestive organs and the accessory digestive organs they all develop from the gods so by the end of third week going to fourth week you know that there is a head and tail folding that is the cephalocodal folding of the embryo you know that the embryo looks like a disc before here now it looks like a disc this is the amniotic cavity this is the yolk sac and this is the trigeminal disc and this is the extra embryonic coelom so it looks like a disc here but by the end of the third week going to fourth week folding happen and when the head and tail folding occur the embryo looks like this you can see here that folding has happened here and when folding happened some endodermal cells you know this is the trilamina jam disc one two three this is the ectoderm this is the mesoderm at the middle and this is the endoderm here endoderm lie close to the yolk sac so you see that it is this trilamina jam disc the ectoderm mesoderm and the endoderm that give rise to the different structures in the body there are cells and these cells proliferate to give rise to different structures in the body then the endoderm here lies close to the yolk sac so after cephalocoda folding or after folding the endoderm some cells of the endoderm here together with the cavity of the yolk sac become enclosed with the embryo eh? it become enclosed with the embryo to form the guts to form the guts so this illustration that i narrated here can be well understood here so you can see that the cavity of the yolk sac here because of folding that happened here so you see that the embryo is no longer looking like a disc eh? so this is the cavity of the yolk sac and some of this cavity together with the endodermal cells that lie closer to the yolk sac become enclosed with the embryo to form this guts here to form this here so and the guts is divided into three the reason why we are starting from this is for us to understand that it is the guts that actually gave rise to the digestive system both the accessory and the main digestive organs it is the guts they all develop either from the fore guts the mid gut or the hind gut so the gut is divided into three we have the four guts which lie at the cranial parts eh? and this four gods is separated from the somatodium by the bucopharyngeal membrane so this is the somatodium here and this is the bucopharyngeal membrane so the four gut is separated from the somatodium that gives rise to the mouth by the bucopharyngeal membrane so you can picture it then this is the mid gut. The mid gut lie in close contact with the yolk sac, as you can see here. So it lies in close contact with the yolk sac. Then this is the hind gut. The hind gut is in close contact with, or it is separated from the proctodium by the cloaca membrane. So this is the cloaca membrane, and this is the proctodium. So here by the fourth week the gut is fully formed. We'll be looking at the derivatives of 
the gods. That is what the four god gave rise to, what the mid god gave rise to, and what the hind god gave rise to, as pertaining to the digestive system. But before that, let's see uh, further developments that happened before that. So remember that this extra embryonic serum here, this is it here. So you appreciate what folding has done to the shape of the embryo. So this is the extra embryonic serum. This is still it here. Eh? This is still the extra embryonic serum. So we are removing the embryo together with the yolk sac. We are taking it out from the extra embryonic serum so that we understand what happened here. Coming over here, this is still the yolk sac. This is the foregut. This is the mid gut, and this is the hind gut. This is the yolk sac here. So when the gut must have formed, then the circulatory system of the embryo is also developing by then, and there is an artery that begin to appear at the dosal part of the embryo. Eh? You can see the dosal part of the embryo. They actually begin to appear. And this artery is known as the dosal iota. So this dosal iota is the primitive uh, artery that supplies the embryo during the fetal life. So this is the dosal iota here, which appear at the dosal aspect of the, of the gods. And this dosa iota gave branches to it gave branch to the four gods, it gave branch to the mid gods, and it also gave branch to the hind gods. So the branch it gave to the four gods later becomes the celiac artery. The branch it gives to the mid gods eh, is called the vitaline artery, which later obliterates or degenerates remaining some fragment or some part of it, which is known as the superior mesenteric artery. Then the branch it gives to the hind gut is known as the inferior mesenteric artery. So this is what happened here. Then coming over here, you notice that the yolk sac begins to uh, form a tubular structure, that it, it begins to become compact, eh, forming a tubular structure here and as this yolk sac is narrowing down to form a tube as you can see here the ventral part of the vitrine artery so this is the vitrine artery here which is a branch of the dosal iota to the mid gut so the vitrine artery begins to obliterate it begins to to degenerate and as this is happening, you can see it is degenerating, remaining only the parts at the dosal aspects, remaining only the branch at the dosal aspect. So the vitrine artery degenerates, remaining the branch of the vitrine artery at the dosal aspect. And this branch now is known as the superior mesenteric artery. So it is known as the superior mesenteric artery. Then Coming over here, you notice that as the yolk sac is forming a tubular structure, also the mid gut here also is kind of forming a tubular structure together with the yolk sac. So the mid gut, instead of the gut, instead of the mid gut, you can see that instead of coming straight like this, eh, the mid gut enter. To form the same uh, or to take the same shape with the yolk sac, it takes the same shape with the yolk sac. And when this happens, the proximal part of the mid gut becomes the preaterial segment. You can see it, and the distal part becomes the postarterial segment, and this is the superior mesenteric artery this is the dosa iota this is the foregut this is the mid gut and this is the hind gut 
So, having seen this, you notice that uh, from this mid gut loop here now, from the post arterial segment, there is an outgrowth from the post arterial segment. And this outgrowth here is known as the sickle board. It is this sickle board that gave rise to the sickle and also the vermiform appendix. Then that is what happened in the formation of the gut. Then coming down to the hind gut, you will notice that this is the hind gut. Then on the ventral aspect of the hind gut, this is the ventral aspect of the hind gut, and this is the dorsal aspect of the hind gut. So on the ventral aspect of the hind gut, there is an outgrowth. Eh? And this outgrowth is known as the allantoic diverticulum. Then this allantoic diverticulum begins to elongate, as you can see here. As it is elongating, it is going deeper into the ventral aspect of the hind gut. So let's look at what happened further in the hind gut. So coming over here, we've been able to see that the allantoic diverticulum was formed and it's open into the hind gut, the ventral part of the hind gut, like I told us. Now, this is the foregut, this is the looping mid gut, and this is the hind gut. Then, the allantois or the allantoic diverticulum, rather, as I told us, open at the ventral part of the hind gut and Below the place the allantoic open into the hind gut is known as the cloaca. And the cloaca membrane separates the cloaca from the proctodium. This is the proctodium, which further gave rise to the anal canal, but we'll come to that. So, having seen this, now I'm coming over here. The allantois grow more deeper into the ventral aspect of the Cloaca. And here now you can see the appearance of the urorectal septum. The urorectal septum comes to separate the cloaca into two the ventral part and the dorsal part. Now, coming over here, you notice that the uh, urorectal septum have been able to separate the cloaca into two. You know, here some of it is still remaining. There is no complete separation here. But here, you notice that there is a complete separation between the ventral and the dorsal uh, cloaca. Now, the ventral cloaca now is what becomes the urogenital sinus, which gave rise to the urogenital system, while the dorsal cloaca becomes the rectum. As the urorectal septum separates the Cloaca into two, the urogenital sinus and the rectum. As it separates it, the cloaca membrane is also separated into two. The urogenital membrane lies directly under the urogenital sinus, while the anal membrane lies directly under the rectum, as you can see here. So the anal membrane, together with the anal pit here, the uh, protodium gave rise to the anal pit here. So the anal membrane together with the anal pit here gave rise to the anal canal. Why the dorsal part of the cloaca gave rise to the rectum, and the ventral part of the cloaca gave rise to the urogenital system, and up here is still the hind gut. So that is what happened in the hind gut. So let's look at the derivatives of the guts. We'll be looking at the derivatives of the four guts, the derivative of the mid gut, and also the derivative of the hind gut. So coming over to the four guts, the four gut gave rise to the floor of the mouth, the oesophagus, the stomach, the respiratory system the first and second part of the duodenum, the liver and gallbladder, and also the pancreas. 
these are the structures that the four gods gave rise to. Then coming to the mid gods, the mid god gave rise to the third and fourth part of the Geodenum, the Jejenium, the Idium, the Secum, the Appendis, the Ascending Colon, and the right to third of the Transverse Colon. These are the structures that the mid gods gave rise to. Then coming over to the hind gods, we have the left one third of the transverse colon, the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, the rectum, the anal canal, and also the urogenital system. They all develop from the hind gods. So, in our next teaching, we'll be looking at how these organs develops from the four gods down to the hind gods that is how these organs that has to do with digestion or how the digestive organs develop starting from the esophagus down to the anal canal so watch out for the part two of this video then we've come to the end of this teaching i will encourage you to like this video share this video to your friends comment on this video and also do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Chisum Great. Thank you very much.